Good afternoon. My needs of introduction. My name is Dr. Edward Paul. I am the Chief Medical Officer of Helen Hayes Hospital. It's my great honor to welcome you to our 124th Annual Honors Seminar. The celebration is always a highlight of our year because it allows us to reflect on the outstanding achievements of those who have, we've had the privilege to serve. We come together to celebrate the life-changing power of rehabilitation, and most importantly, out of the incredible strength, resilience, and determination of our patients. Each year we recognize individuals who have faced tremendous challenges and emerged not only stronger, but also as a source of hope and inspiration for all of us. This year's honorees have pushed beyond the limits of what they thought was possible. And in that pursuit of mobility and independence following disabling injuries and illnesses. We thank them for sharing their stories with us and we celebrate with them today their triumphs. We also would like to acknowledge our dedicated staff who have made their inspirational recovery possible through their boundless passion and expertise. And the families of the loved ones of our patients, your encouragement and ongoing support make all the difference in the world. Finally, we'd like to thank many of the friends of the hospital who support our patients and staff, including the New York State Department of Health and the Helen Hayes Board of Visitors, Foundation, and Volunteer Corps. I now have the great pleasure of introducing my esteemed colleague, who is deeply invested in the mission and advancing the health of our community. New York State Commissioner of Health, Dr. James McDonald. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Paul, and I want to thank Ben Evans as well, your Chief Executive Officer as well. It really is wonderful to be here with you today. It's wonderful to be invited to this Honors Assembly. You know, you've been around since 1900. It's a long time. And as I was sharing with Lisa earlier, the State Department Health has been here since 1901. So you're a little bit older than us. You know, it, it's hard to do something good. It's really hard to do something good for a long time. But you're doing something good, you're doing something good for a very long time, and that doesn't come by accident. It's intentional work. It's intentional work because of your leadership, because of your staff, because of your patients, it's because of that resilience you demonstrate, and your commitment to do something good. You know, I tell the team at the Department of Health often I have some of my stories. There are some of your stories as well. You have a lot of stories here. A lot of great stories here, stories of challenge, perseverance, overcoming, and stories of hope that just don't end. You know, at New York State Department of Health, we're humbled to have Helen Hayes as part of our team. It's really amazing we have a hospital as part of our department. You know, I, I joined the Department of Health in July of 22, became the commissioner in January 1st of 23. As I was learning about the department, I remember someone telling me we had four nursing homes. I said, really? We have four nursing homes? And they said, by the way, we have a hospital. This may come as a shock to you, but when I joined as the commissioner of the New York State Department, I didn't even know you existed. And it's been delightful to learn more and more about you. One of the reasons it took me so long to get there, though, is there wasn't a problem I needed to address. In other words, it was running fine without me. And I simply came down last week in particular to say goodbye to our friend Ed and say hello to my new friend Yvonne. And it's wonderful to be here with you. One of the things we do in the New York State Department of Health, so we actually like to make definitions really clear. And I just want to close with this one concept here is we actually have a definition for the word health. And I think sometimes when I say the word health, people think like, well, I should know what that means. It's one of those words I think we all think and we know what it is. But quite frankly, if I were asking for a definition, I might get a hundred definitions in this room. When I asked my leadership team to come up with those, give me a simple definition, one I can remember, because I'm a simple person, I like to have simple definitions. I'm a pediatrician at heart, and so quite frankly, I'm used to explaining things to children, so I dislike things to be explained to me simply. 
So the way we define health at the New York State Department of Health is achieving an optimal state of physical, mental, and social well-being. If you really look at what you do, you help people achieve health. You help people achieve an optimal state of physical, mental, and social well-being. If you're a staff member here, you don't have a job, you have a mission and a purpose, and that's something that you should be really thankful to have. If you're a patient here, I assure you, you're very good hands. And if you're someone who needs to leave here, know that you really have us all behind you in the New York State Department of Health. We're proud of you. We're thrilled with everything you do down here. And we couldn't be happier to be invited to this wonderful event. Like I said to my leadership team here at the Helen Hayes Hospital, I come down from time to time, say hello. We don't want to be nuisance, but we do want to be supportive and see what you need. I'm already excited to see about some of the things that's going to make this beautiful facility, seeing great people. But I really look forward to joining you today and sharing the great victories won by all the people here around me. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Pleasure to have you here. My pleasure now to turn over the podium to Jackie Valdez. She is the administrator of our inpatient therapy services, and she will continue on with the awards presentations. Hi everyone, welcome to our ceremony. As Dr. Hall said, my name is Jackie Velez. I've been at Helen Hayes for many years. I can't even add anymore, I don't remember how long it's been, but I do know, and I have told many people today, today is my favorite day at Helen Hayes. Honors Assembly is always a wonderful day. I think you'll be very impressed with the stories that you hear, and welcome to our facility. So, to start out, thank you so much, Dr. Hall, for the introduction. And I am very pleased to begin our award ceremony with the presentation of the Helen Hayes MacArthur Award. Presenting this award today will be Mike Mezio, and he'll be joined by Amber Bernardinelli. <laughs> Eric's 
impressive games in physical and occupational therapy were not the only factor that made him a special patient. He gave his best every day and would often look up YouTube videos on his own time to see how he could perform tasks better. Every day he came to therapy with a positive attitude, which often rubbed off on other patients. When Eric was in the therapy room, he made it a lighter room. He was always laughing and smiling, which had a positive effect on the other patients as well as the therapist. During therapy sessions, he would get other patients involved in conversation and try to create a fun atmosphere. He would consistently introduce himself to new patients and immediately make them feel welcome. Eric was observed multiple times, spending time with patients sitting by themselves or getting no visitors so that he would not feel lonely. He would try to do nice gestures for other patients, such as encouraging them during therapy or buying them candy. When his roommate was moved to a different floor, Eric would still go visit him and leave candy on his pillow. Eric's time at Helen Hayes Hospital left a positive impact on everyone he met, patients and staff members included. He is a perfect reflection of Helen Hayes MacArthur's love of life and compassion for others, and so deserving of our world's award. Eric, we are so happy to present this honor to you today. Congratulations. Liz and me 
incredible progress, but still needed assistance with all of her self care and mobility. She was starting to regain movement in her left arm and hand, but still had limited function. Knowing that Liz needed more time for therapy, she was transferred down to our subacute unit, where she continued to work hard in and out outside of therapy. By the time Liz was discharged from the subacute unit, she was able to transfer and ambulate with a rolling walker and a touch assist. She was able to complete the self care with minimal
When Jimmy arrived at Helen Hayes to begin his rehabilitation, his trade tube had just been removed, and he was adjusting to eating and drinking by mouth again. He was unable to speak using words or understand what people were saying to him due to a severe aphasia and verbal apraxia, which is a combination of a language and motor speech impairment caused by his stroke. Jimmy was unable to use his right arm or leg due to heavy braces. Because of this, he was unable to get out of bed on his own and required total assistance with all self-care activities, including brushing and showering, and functional mobility. About one month into his stay, Jimmy was having significant pain in his back and down his left leg. His physical therapist also noticed Jimmy newly developed weakness of his intact left leg and was having difficulty stepping with his left foot. Though he was still unable to communicate by speaking, Jimmy alerted the staff non-verbally, and it turns out he had to be transferred back to acute care for spinal surgery. Even though this was incredibly challenging, Jimmy returned to Helen Hayes and got right back to work. He was often seen in the morning, ready to get into his power chair, so he could bring himself to therapy, which included taking the elevator downstairs to his speech sessions five minutes early. Upon returning to Helen Hayes, Jimmy worked incredibly hard and made significant progress. In occupational therapy, he wanted to focus on his right arm and hand and be able to assist with all his self-care needs. Although he continued to have difficulty using his hand, Jimmy was able to initiate movement with his shoulder and arm and became very good at dressing himself lying in bed. In physical therapy, he wanted to focus on returning strength and movement to his legs required use of orthotics called AFOs on both legs to assist with his walking. In speech therapy, he worked on comprehending what people were saying to him, reading skills, being able to speak in words again, and practicing writing words with his own dominant. We cannot forget Jimmy's favorite accessory while he was in rehab, his wool bag. As we mentioned, although his words were difficult, him to get out, you always knew what Jimmy was thinking. His facial expressions, sounds, and ability to act out what he was saying were the best we had ever seen. He would always alert you to his move back and ensure that it was attached by making the noise of the alarm as it was very problematic, although it truly assisted in healing his wound. One of his favorite lines was one more week, as he was told that each week about getting the wound back removed. He was thrilled when it was finally removed. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy was one of the miracles out of Helen Hayes Hospital. When he was first admitted, he denied recreational therapy services as he was going through the motions of coping, dealing with his injury, and working through his top marriages. When he returned to Helen Hayes Hospital after his spinal surgery, he had a new perspective ready to take on his new life with the help of his therapists and family. He agreed to recreational therapy services this time around as he progressed in his therapies and was regaining his speech. He had a passion for video games and was unable to play due to his right hand increases. He worked with his recreational therapist and Helen Hayes Hospital Peer Mentor Coordinator, who shares Jimmy's passion for gaming, to learn and excel in one-handed video games with an adaptive controller. He was emotional at first, but caught on very quickly and began to play video games independently again. Jimmy had a huge smile on his face every time the TV card was brought up to his room. He was provided with a gaming system for his room over the weekends when he did not have therapies. When his, th when his therapist returned Monday morning and asked how the weekend went, his first answer was always video games. By the time he left, left Helen Hayes Hospital, he was playing without assistance and would play any free chance he had. He was provided with a 3D printed controller that his peer mentor coordinator so graciously made for him. He was able to go home, hook up his adaptive controller, and was ready to play. Jimmy stands out the most because of his incredible work ethic, resilience, and willingness to show up to every session ready to put forth his best effort. 
He did an unbelievable job at conveying his thoughts, despite not always being able to say the words he was thinking. His personality could light up the room, always smiling and joking around despite his situation and how he was feeling in the moment. Jimmy could be heard singing his favorite songs that would play on the iPod, which always brought a huge smile to his face and everyone else's. His interactions with other patients were truly inspiring. Jimmy knew almost every staff member and said hi to everyone he passed. Jimmy, I know that you hate we're saying all these things about you right now, but sorry, it's just true. <laughs> Despite intense daily pain and wound care needs, Jimmy showed up to therapy every day without complaints and did everything he could to walk, talk, and process again. When it came time for discharge, Jimmy was able to stand and transfer himself, get himself dressed, walk with a cane wearing his AFOs, and improved his ability to talk and understand all conversation. When keeping in touch with Jimmy and his sister, he is always working hard and focusing on his three main goals, to get his arm and hand more functional, improve his walking, and his speech and reading. He has been working on these goals daily with the help and love of his family. He is also continuing with outpatient therapy. He overcame so much and is back to living his life at home, which is what Helen Hayes strives for. He was able to lead with his strength, his voice, and his motivation to continue rehab. His determination, resilience, sense of humor, and ability to communicate with others, even when his speech was greatly affected, proved Jimmy to be an outstanding patient and recipient of this award. What you have overcome is nothing short of incredible. Keep working hard. Congratulations, Jimmy. We are so proud of you.
Timmy is my twin brother. Yeah. And knows me better than anyone. changing process, Timmy has played multiple roles and has done everything with my best interest at heart, which has helped my transition back home a little easier. Even posing as Jimmy to renew his driver's license. <laughs> 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 Timmy and Sheila have welcomed me into their home with open arms during my recovery and provided me with the necessary tools to live my life as normally and independently as possible, while still making sure I am safe and taken care of. With the help of all of these amazing people, I will continue to improve and promise I will not give up on my recovery. Thank you again for this award, and I hope I continue to make you all proud.
but also seemed to indicate that he was unable to participate in the ways we were asking him to. Eye rolls of frustration were often paired with an apologetic smile at the end of our sessions, as we therapists racked our brains for ways to tap into his potential. Dale was transferred to Mid Hudson Regional Hospital on December 11th for his cranioplasty, which was performed on December 15th. He was then transferred back to Helen Hayes on December 19th
I always say to my staff, if you want to work in rehab, you need to have two things, flexibility and a sense of humor. So for all of you who, uh, who may have noticed, that was not Ashley, that was Carl Holmstrom, one of our speech therapists. <laughs> Uh, our third Medal of Independence will be presented by Laura Carlino and Lynn Mathis, joined by Tiffany Rivera and Nicole Asaturi. Now than it did before my 
stroke about a year and a half ago. Brings me back to a period of time in my life when I was engaged to my now husband, Mark. Just a side note, today is actually our 20th wedding anniversary.
The four are the love that sustains me. I can live and I can breathe and I can function again because of your love for me. What I learned, I started, I'm sorry, I think you. I started out talking about independence. And what I've learned on this journey most is my dependence for love. I can only pray that for the rest of my life, I can give back to this world all the love that you've given me. And if this can happen, we're in for bright days ahead. Thank you.
The mental, emotional, and physical fortitude that Anna demonstrated through this process was incredibly humbling to witness, as well experience can be part of. I know I speak for the entire therapy staff when I say that we have all learned a thing or two about determination, patience, and grit from Anna. Despite the unexpected and repeated challenges during what should have been a straightforward recovery, typically 10 to 14 days, she was here for two months and nine days with us, Anna maintained that entire time a steady, positive attitude and touched our hearts along the way. I often use her as an example to get for patients so they maintain their precautions. <laughs> And I will look forward to visiting you and your family at Anna's Restaurant in Newburgh with <laughs> Slight movement. 
Ethan also had a back brace and a neck brace for months that made it very difficult for him to get comfortable or to position him for therapy. In addition to the extensive injuries he suffered in this accident, he suffered numerous medical complications throughout his recovery, including the need for at least 10 surgical procedures in and out of the acute care hospital. The majority of Ethan's admission was spent bed down, unable to walk, dress himself, go to the bathroom, eat or talk for the good part of nearly a year. In fact, there were only one to two hours of total time that he was allowed to be upright, which meant that most of his therapy was done lying in his bed. As you can imagine, a major barrier for any movement, thinking task, or strength training. Despite unsurmountable odds, Ethan proved to be a fighter. He had instincts telling him not to give up. Ethan gradually began emerging from a coma, whispering words in speech therapy. He followed simple instructions with more attention and accuracy, and then was able to point to words and pictures and eat single ice chips. Ethan progressed toward whispering sentences, writing and reading, eating and drinking, gradual sips and spoonfuls of food. Many months later, his breathing tube finally came out, and Ethan began slowly using his true voice. He also started using a therapy binder that enabled him to hone in on more complex tasks, speaking, word retrieval, cognitive linguistic skills, which was a huge feat given the limited engagement he had on admission, all done mostly while bed down and consequently sleeping often. Ethan continued to progress and was cleared to sit upright for brief periods of one to two hours due to room precautions. Now he was able to participate in more complex therapy tasks. We remember telling Ethan the plan for each treatment and him responding in a motivated voice, let's do it. <laughs> that became our slogan during his therapy. During his long recovery, Ethan did not always trust his body to feel safe during activities. He would hold on to bed rests, the wheelchair armrests, grab bars, and parallel bars with every ounce of strength his frail body could muster. We celebrated when he let go of both hands and caught a ball for the first time. Upon his discharge from inpatient, Approximately a year later, in October of 2023, Ethan was starting to take steps with a rolling walker and long line braces with the help of Chew Step. When thinking of Ethan's complex and painful recovery, his kindness toward other people really stands out in our minds. Ethan worked with a young therapy aide who he had a special connection with. During a physical therapy session, he called her his best friend. And then he said, he took it back, you're not my best friend. <laughs> you are my sister. Ethan will always greet his therapist with the friendliest smile and hello, asking how we were doing each and every visit, and participating in all tasks, no matter the barriers. Ethan was polite, well-mannered, and a truly respectable, hard-working young man. Ethan went home and transitioned to our outpatient programs where he continues today. Ethan is motivated and has been an absolute pleasure to work with. When Ethan initially presented to outpatient services, it was very clear he had been working hard at home after being discharged from inpatient. He had significantly increased his range of motion and strength in his arms. Ethan was participating more in ADLs, and though he was walking more, he was limited to less than five minutes with the walk. Ethan is now completing the majority of his ADLs on his own without adaptive equipment. We are continuing to work toward independence. There has been, therapy has been addressing functional tasks that we know he is happy to participate in, 
like making his bed and standing while doing the dishes at the sink. <laughs> Ethan continued to demonstrate hard work, determination, and an ability to face his fears, perhaps with a bit of coaxing from his therapist and his family. He has greatly improved the fluidity of his gait and can now walk for over 30 minutes using bilateral forearm crutches. And more recently, he has initiated walking with a single forearm crutch in the home and cooking simple hot meals. Just last week, Ethan was back to shooting free throws while being provided light assist, followed by quite a bit of bragging about his basketball skills. <laughs> In speech therapy, Ethan comes to work every session with genuine excitement for, for therapy, kindness, and respect, with an open mind and heart to be the very best version of himself. He has become an outgoing, conversational, humorous, inquisitive young man, willing to learn things across his recovery journey. Ethan's personality shines through to all that know and love him. I'm personally honored that Ethan is interested in becoming a physical therapist even though he's made it very clear his goal is to take my place. <laughs> Ethan brings such light to the day, and it is no surprise that he's such a respectful, kind person given his family. They have supported Ethan, carried over our therapy recommendations and have also been a pleasure to get to know over the last few months. We therefore would like to also honor Ethan's family, who is a remarkable force to be reckoned with. They were supportive, strong advocates for him, willing to turn their lives upside down for their beloved son. Mom and Dad took turns sleeping in the hospital each and every night besides their son's bed. They pushed him hard and didn't waver. They only got stronger, more determined. Dad, Anthony, was sensitive and gave tons of hugs. The pure joy in his face with his son's accomplishments was simply emotional and tender. Mom, Melissa, did it all. She went from a soft-spoken nurturer to a tireless advocate, asserting her voice, collaborating with staff, and acquiring as much knowledge as possible to make solid decisions for her son's safety and livelihood. What I fondly remember is that we knew Melissa trusted us when she would step out of therapy, making sure to tell us that she respected our methods and our assertions with her son's recovery. Melissa, you are the epitome of a superwoman. Sister Annalise did her duty of playing games, helping her brother navigate the cell phone, and lifting his spirits with joyous activities and interactions. Then, when mom and dad had to face their return to work, Grandma Carmen stepped up. She filled all roles and was this pillar of structure, continuity, and insight to carry over every aspect of Ethan's therapy with one single hand when mom and dad couldn't be there. Carmen, you are truly fierce. <laughs> Ethan now spends time with his friends and even sings in his church choir. His mother stays in touch via video and text and they feel connected to Helen Hayes. We consider them family. Ethan, there just aren't enough words to express the excitement we feel in honoring you today. You have earned this recognition for your work ethic, your heart, your dedication, and your spirit in leading adversity. You're young, but now wiser than your years with all you've endured and overcome. We watched you struggle, but you put your game face on, and you won. You are a real-life warrior, and we have no doubt you will in turn inspire those that cross your, cross your path with your beautiful, triumphant story. Ethan, you rose like a phoenix and are rebuilding your life. What a magical life ahead of you with your family by your side. You and your family exemplify hope, perseverance, determination, and ability to come anything that gets in your way. 
came to Helen Hayes in a severely compromised state, uncertain about the future. And he left able to talk, walk, eat, and perform ADLs, and participate in your community, enjoying life again. Your real life success story, unlike any other. We're all so very proud of you, and you're so deserving of the Spirit of Achievement Award. Now, come claim what you ordered and accept this award.
much. Refreshments will be served in the noise. Thank you for coming.